Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Uh, today I got a, a pretty cool visitor. This is my boy Vance. Um, he's been, well if you didn't know, well, I guess you don't know. This is a straight razor video. We're going to hone a straight razor. Um, Vance is going to hone his personal razor. I'm going to hone uh, a test razor with a, a new stone to me or a new stone combo. Um, and Vance He's had some time on the stones, but I don't believe he's ever actually taken his razor from completely dull, bevel set, refine the bevel, and finish the edge. Uh, and then, I don't know if you guys can tell this in the video, but I haven't shaved for about a week, so I got some whiskers. Hopefully they'll show up. So this is going to be Vance's first time ever honing his own razor from start to finish, and my first uh, straight razor shave on camera. Um, we would do have Vance shave on camera, but um, he's fairly young still, and his whiskers, uh, you know, they are there, but they're kind of patchy, and um, uh, and he shaved pretty recently, whereas uh, I didn't. I wanted to save up for the the video, so you have enough to. Hopefully, I got enough whiskers. You'll be able to see him come off and everything. So anyway, so Vance's razor is this one. Now. Um, these little paper sheaths right here, they're really, really handy. All you do is you just take a scrap of copy paper, um, you know, wrap it around the razor, and then put a couple of pieces of scotch tape on it. They really help keep uh, everything from getting dinged up, um, you know, in a bathroom drawer if you don't have a nice case or, uh, you know, when they're, they're laying on the, the shop bench um, from getting messed up. Uh, also, you, well... I don't know if you'd want to use these like in a cup in a bathroom because the paper would probably uh, keep moisture around. But anyway, so this is Vance's razor. Um, it is a Joss T. Scott Warranted Hand Forge number 177 made in Germany. And Vance drives a 1969 vintage Volkswagen Bug, the regular Bug, not the Super Beetle. And since it was made in Germany, he's uh, he kind of loves all things German. So when we went to pick out a straight razor, that's the one he got. This one is about, I don't know, call it a half hollow if you want to. Maybe a third hollow, something like that. So it's a nice hollow, but it's not, um, you know, too difficult to hone. The ones that are really, really thin... Um, you start having a problem, uh, you use a little bit different technique when you hone them uh, because the amount of pressure that's required to get the stone to cut is so close to the amount of pressure where that edge will flex um, away from a straight line. But this one isn't too bad. So I'm going to hand it to Vance. Vance is going to use tape. Um, you know, I know there's a big deal with... Uh, well, some people make a big deal over it. Uh, honing on tape or honing without tape. Um, the reason you would use tape is... Uh, the reason Vance... Uh, the, the reason we're having him hone on tape is because... Uh, you know, he's a beginner. And so tape gives you uh, a little bit of uh, leeway. Okay, so... If you've got a razor that you really like and you don't want to mess the spine up, use tape. If you're a beginner um, and you're still kind of getting your pressure and everything dialed in, you know, the amount of pressure that you need to, uh, to be able to hone properly, you know, use tape your first couple of times. Once you start getting confident in everything, then you can, you know, decide whether you want to keep the tape or not. You can probably take some of that off. Take about half of that off. There you go. And all this is is uh, 3M Plain Jane old electrical tape from Home Depot. And so he's got it. And you want to make sure that you... Um, okay, so we've got some wrinkles in there in the tape. And so that's going to um, kind of change our edge geometry if we leave them in there. So, so to tape a razor up, you just unroll some tape like that, put the spine right about in the middle, about like that, and then roll it up. 
then you can turn it upside down if you want to. Right about there. Yep. Cut your tape off. So you got a nice piece of tape like that. And then what you do is you just pinch it and roll it in. That way it's nice and flat on both sides of the razor. Okay? Alright, so now the stone that Vance is going to be using is my Suhiro 1.6. We've got it in a, uh, you know, a container of water here. It's been soaking for a little bit. The brown side is a uh, 1000 grit. The white side is a 6000 grit. Okay. I normally do this over the sink, but uh, I think you'd have a hard time seeing what we're doing there. And we're going to move the camera around so that you get to see it from different angles. Okay. <clears throat> so, first things first. Um, Vance is very, he's got a very, very light touch. The last time I had him out here, we were working on this razor. He had it taped up, and I think he said he did like 200 laps. And I looked at it, and I could I looked at it underneath the microscope. I could hardly see any wear at all on the edge or on the spine. So he's got that light of a touch that he could do 200 laps on this thing and not get the stone to cut either the edge or the tape. So today what we're going to do is since Vance is a beginner and we know we're going to go a complete bevel set, we're going to go ahead and use the burr base method. Okay, so he's going to take one side of the razor, do scrubbing passes back and forth. Um, if he brings up a burr, great, uh, you know, roughly 50 or so. Then flop, uh, switch to the other side, do 50 passes. If he brings up, sooner or later we'll get to the point that we'll get a burr and he's going to try to keep it even on both sides. Once he gets that burr, then we refine the burr, and then we'll take it to the 6K. Um, once we get that burr back and forth on the 6K, then we'll go ahead and go to the, the Nanawa 12K. Um, probably just edge leading strokes on that stone. Uh, get it finally polished up and ready to go. He'll strop it, and then I'll shave with it. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see me, but I'm going to be over here working with a... Uh, uh, a Dan's Arkansas soft and um, black uh, brand new stone just picked it up off of Amazon there's Dan's I want to say it was like seventy dollars or so so I really wanted to try out some natural okay right about there okay so put your stone or your your blade on the stone okay so that the spine and the edge are contacting that's the nice thing about straight razors is that they've got a built-in angle guide so you don't have to worry about holding the right angle now what you're going to want to do is put just a little bit more pressure with your thumb grab it like that and there you go with your thumb so that you're torquing the edge into the stone you still want the edge and the spine to contact the stone at the same time but you want to put a little bit more pressure on the edge side. Okay, now once you got it like that, go ahead and bring it to you and then go back. And you can do all the way forward and all the way back if you want to, or you can do half strokes like this. Either way, now keep your stone wet. Now you're torquing it in into the edge, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. The nice thing about using uh, somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of experience on the stones for these videos is that you guys will get to see, you know, just how little of it is required um, to get your razor going. Um, a lot of people make way too much of, of this honing business. Um, honing, you know, it's just sharpening. And sharpening is as simple as you're taking a chunk of steel and you're rubbing it on a rock. Um, I've had a whole bunch of folks tell me that that's not the case with razors. Uh, 
that it's way, way more complicated than that. But really, a razor is made out of steel and a sharpening stone. Now, these are, are man-made stones um, in the case of this Suhiro. But this Arkansas stone, it's a rock. So you're taking a chunk of steel and you're rubbing it on a rock in such a manner that you get the two, uh, the side of the razor and the other side of the razor to meet at a perfect edge. How many stone or how many strokes is that? I wasn't counting. Okay, now go ahead and take one more. Okay, now pick it up and feel for a burr. You felt a burr before, right? Okay. You can't tell. You can't tell. So you were you were working on this side. So if you do have a burr, you'll feel it on this side. And you don't have one yet. So now, but, now that was this side. Now what I'm doing is I'm checking his tape to see if it's got any wear on it. Now I can see some pretty fresh, uh, it looks like he is abrading his edge bevel, but his tape looks like it's been untouched, which means that he's torquing the razor right and he's putting enough pressure in that the, the stone is actually cutting. Okay, now go this way. Okay, now I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but as he's as he's taking a stroke on the forward stroke, you can see some of that water is wanting to climb up onto the edge bevel. Okay, that's another way that you can tell if you're not going to use a burr when that water climbs up onto the blade that means you're going to be pretty close to the edge is uh, you know being done on that side because if the if the edge isn't contacting the stone at the very edge meaning that your your bevel is set then that water will not climb up the blade nice and smooth with just a little bit of torque this way this way here since he's going that direction uh, well the edge is facing that direction so he wants to torque it just a little bit so that the spine stays in contact with the stone at the same time that the edge is in contact with the stone but the pressure that he's putting on there is going to be focused on the edge bevel and not on the spine if you hold them flat, hold the razor flat and put an equal amount of pressure on the edge as you do on the spine, chances are pretty good you'll wear your spine out prematurely. The spine is, I mean the way a razor is designed, the spine wears at the same time that the edge wears when you're honing and that's what maintains your geometry. <coughs> but um, you don't want to wear your spine out before you wear the edge out. I don't know if you guys can see this, but he's starting to get to where the uh, the stone is lifting, or you know, the water is is coming up over the bevel pretty evenly, with the exception of right here and right at the very tip of the toe. So let's see if you've got a burr yet. You do not, but I can see with the naked eye that you're starting to get pretty close. And I'm not seeing any appreciable wear on your tape. So now go this way a little bit, just to kind of keep everything even. I don't know if, if y'all have noticed this or not, but um, I had to get a new SD card for the, the GoPro just to have a spare. And while I was in there trying to, to format the new SD card, I found the, the setting um, 
you know how in the other videos every time I look up to see what you guys are looking at because remember I've got a, a, a mirror behind the camera so that I can see what you're seeing but every once in a while you'd see me reach up and kind of tap the back of the screen well I found that setting so now that screen doesn't go to sleep after a minute so that's really nice I'm thinking he's starting to get pretty close a little bit more up to or see how the toe is hanging off the edge you're either going to want to kind of modify your stroke so that it comes into the the side of the or onto the surface of the stone or kind of work up there a little bit more there you go that looks good The bevel set is the most important part of honing a razor. Now, when I say bevel set, that's razor speak for getting both sides of that edge bevel to meet at an edge or a burr, one of the two. If you're using a burr base method, you want a burr there and that lets you know that you are meeting if you're not using the burr base method, you'll have to rely on things like watching that water climb up on the blade. Um, I've seen some guys use uh, grapes or uh, cherry tomatoes. Um, once that bevel is set, you'll be able to cut into that cherry tomato or that grape. If it's not set yet, you won't be able to, to cut into it. Okay, now check for a burr. Kind of maybe sort of there? Kind of maybe sort of. Oh yeah, yeah, you're starting to get one. Okay, so you've got a burr from about here down to about there. And it's coming in a little bit on the heel and not quite yet on the toe. So, now when I say that there's a burr there, guys, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about like the burr that you would get like on a lawnmower blade let's say you were sharpening a lawnmower blade on a grinder you know and you get that real big old nasty burr on the back that's oh you know fifty thousandths of an inch thick okay we're not talking a burr like that i mean this burr right here i mean i can barely feel it um it's maybe the thickness of a fine hair a fine head hair like uh, uh, yeah a really fine head hair and those are typically you know three four five thousandths of an inch thick so we're not talking about a huge burr here we're talking like you can feel it you know it's there but it is no by no means large in fact I don't even think that no I can see it with a naked eye but it is very very fine in fact, while Vance is working on the toe, I'm going to go grab the little lens, or the 10x lens for the camera, and we'll see if you can pick that up. So, you need to work... Well, can you see the burr there? Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll just work up here on the toe section um, and try to bring that burr in. I'll grab that lens and then we'll look for it. <clears throat> I will say that as for as long as Vance, I mean as much stone time as what Vance has had, he has got an incredibly smooth and light touch. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop there and let's take a look at it.
Okay, I am still not seeing any wear on the tape. Now, you'll have to twist it, but it'll look like a really bright line right at the very edge there. Yeah. You can see it? Mm hmm. Now, where do you see it at? Uh, everywhere up to here. To there? Okay. Now, is it all the way back to the heel? Yeah. No? Okay. All right. Let's see if we can. This is a little 10x uh, macro lens here. Let's see if we can. You know, I'm not too sure that I'm going to be able to tell when I can see it here in the lens. Because remember, I mean, what you guys are looking at is uh you know an eight by eight screen on your laptop what i'm looking at right now is a uh, inch and a half by inch tall screen and what we're looking for here that burr is going to reflect is just a very very thin strip of steel that reflects light differently than the bevels do okay so well, I guess we haven't said it in this video here, but the edge bevel is where your blade finish ends and the scratch marks from your stone start, and those end at the very edge of the blade. So hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit of a light reflecting there. It's not here, but it is pretty strong up in here, and then it fades out towards the toe. So I'm just going to kind of trust to the camera and hope that you guys are going to be able to see that. So now that we've got that started, there you go. Now that we've got that started and Vance can see it and he can feel it, now what you need to do is work on the toe until you see or feel that burr all the way up toward the toe and then down at the heel. Okay, go ahead. Now a lot of times what will happen is, is that you will get that burr or you'll get the bevel set closer to the heel than you will to the toe. And the reason for that is remember, if you're holding the blade, bring you over here again. <coughs> Actually I'll bring you over here, that way we're not getting in his way. Okay, so you put your, your razor, there you are, on the stone. And like I said, you're putting a little bit more torque with your thumb, just a little bit, uh, to where the pressure is mostly on the edge, okay? Well, your thumb is way back here, right? So you'll have, I mean, with the, if you were to put, say, two ounces worth of torque into this thing, you're going to have two, the full two ounces here at the heel. But way out here towards the toe, that torque is going to be less because it's farther away from your thumb, which is what is, you know, creating the torque. So that's why a lot of times you'll get more wear up in the heel and not quite as much out in the toe. Because simply it's farther away from, uh, you know, your thumb, which is what's making the torque happen. Let's check in with Vance and see where he's at. Okay, where is it? Uh, it's kind of still mostly in the same spot, but I think it's climbing up to the toe. You think it's climbing towards the toe? It is, yep. So now go ahead and go to this side. I mean, even though we don't have it all the way up here, we still want to keep the wear fairly even. Now that first stroke might feel a little bit weird because that burr is going to be getting moved over. Did you feel that? Yeah? Now, the whole um, edge leading versus edge trailing strokes, okay? Uh, and their formation on a burr. Okay, I hear that when you do an edge trailing stroke, okay, which is 
the edge is facing that way and you're coming this way all right um, in one of uh, Mastro Livy's videos he was doing the half strokes um, on a, a codicle underneath running water all right now I don't speak the same language that, that Livy does I was trusting to the uh, um, the captions on the bottom and just watching what he was doing and then going ahead and duplicating that here in my shop but what he said was that when you do an edge leading stroke as in when you go to try to cut the top of the stone that is when it the stone actually cuts the edge when you do an edge trailing stroke when it comes back that's the stone smoothing the edge out okay and I have seen that um, I do believe you get more you're removing more material on the forward stroke the edge leading stroke than what you are on the edge trailing stroke or the the more of a stropping type motion okay now don't go off the end of the stone I also saw a um, a fairly old publication um, somewhere on the forums uh, we're talking 100 150 years type of deal uh, ago and they were describing the use of half strokes which is another term that people use for this forward and back motion um, is just a way to remove material rapidly to be able to get your bevel set now I like doing the burr base method because it lets you know without a shadow of doubt that you are at a bevel set if you bring up a burr on one side then you go to the other side, you move that burr back to the original side, you have to have your bevel set. There is no way that you will get a burr without having that bevel set. If there's a burr from the heel to the toe on one side, you reverse the blade, work on the other side of the blade, and then till the burr comes over to the original side, there is no way that you cannot be at an apex. Okay, If that burr happens, you have to be that both sides have to meet there's no two ways around it the bevel or the burr is one of the no don't go off the end the burr is one of the most honest things out there it will never lie to you um, that's why I like it so much okay um, and the burr you know hey for a bevel set when you know that you're gonna do a bevel set Anytime you do a bevel set, you're going to use up material in your razor. It's just the way it is. Now look for the burr. See where you're at. Or feel for it. Yeah, see it a bit right here and right here. You still feel it at both sections? Just not in the middle. Yeah, I feel it on the... Okay, I, I'm feeling that burr from about here up to about here. I don't quite feel it on... No, I'm starting to feel it on the heel. Now the burr is so small that when you wipe the water away you want to be real careful that you don't uh, wipe the burr off because it is that delicate. Okay. And then I'm also checking for reflecting light um, off the edge. Okay. So it's, it's pretty much there. So what I want you to do is do 10 strokes on this side and then 10 strokes on this side of the, the uh, half strokes forward and back so down and back is one mm -hmm. and make sure you get that toe these are three inch wide stones so they're really nice because uh, you don't have to do as much of like an X type stroke as what you would on like a two inch stone but you still have to make sure that the stone contacts the whole edge where was I? Um, oh, using the burr. <clears throat> now I've heard all kind of arguments about against the burr, okay? And pretty much what it boils down to is I think there's a misconception that if you 
if you can't feel the burr, that it's not there. These water stones are generally, they're pretty soft, okay, which means that, um, okay, so the stone is, got, is composed of two different things, okay, you've got something in the stone that cuts the steel. Um, like if you've got a, I don't know what these stones are made out of, but like, let's say a Norton Crystalline Coarse Fine, okay? Well, those stones are made up of silicon carbide and a binder, okay? Do 10 on both sides? Mm -hmm. All right, now, let's... Oh yeah, I feel that burr pretty, I mean, it's a pretty light one. But it's all the way on that side, and I saw it on the original side. Can you feel it? Let's see, you were on this side, right? Mm hmm So you would feel it on this side. And it's just a, it feels like a little bit of s scratchy. You feel that? Mm hmm Okay. Now, that's real little, though, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're, I mean, this burr right here, from what I can see of it, that I haven't stropped off with my fingers... Okay, we're talking, it might be two thousandths of an inch thick, or wide. Okay, so we're not talking very much at all. Okay, so now what we need to do is go to the fine side. I'm going to wash it off pretty good so that we don't get any, uh, you know, dust or any uh, pieces of the towel on there. Now go to the original side, so you're coming back this way, and do the same thing until you feel that burr move over. All right, so probably like 20 or so, because not only are you moving that burr over, but you're also putting this grit of polish onto the edge bevel. <clears throat> okay, so in a stone, in a man-made stone, you've got something inside the stone, the particles that cut the steel, and then you've got the rest of the stone, which is made up of binders especially with these water stones, they are very soft, okay? They're not like, like a Norton Crystalline, and even that isn't really all that hard. I mean, the binder that's in there isn't all that hard. You go to something like an Arkansas stone, um, and it's not, I mean, I guess you can kind of sort of think about it the same way, uh, where you've got something in there that cuts and something that kind of holds the stone together, or diamonds. You know, diamonds don't they don't release any of the binder or the cutting particles in there. These do. So whether you're doing edge leading or edge trailing strokes, one way or another, if you grind a piece of steel and you grind one side of that steel until it meets the other side, you will form a burr. Okay, there's no two ways around it. Whether you go edge leading, or where you go edge trailing, or you do circles, or you do X strokes, or you write, the, write your name or the alphabet on the stone with the blade, whatever, if you abrade this side to where it meets this side, you will create a burr. Now these water stones are soft enough and muddy enough, for lack of a better term, now you want to make sure that the spine and the edge contact on inside the, the edge there. Mm -hmm. What happens is, is that you develop a slurry where bits and pieces of that stone are suspended in the water. That breaks the burr off as it's being formed. It's not that the burr is not being formed anymore. It's still being formed, you just don't see it because it's getting broke off. Now when it's getting broke off, now you've got bits and pieces of steel that are mixed in with your abrasive particles and your binder particles in the water on top of the stone, okay? Which is why when somebody just does leading strokes, they say they don't form a burr. Well, you still do form a burr, it's just that the burr gets consumed by the stone as it's being formed. Now see that, that water is getting cut. 
Oh, here, let me do it this way. Now see how that water climbs up onto the edge as you do your forward stroke? Now watch your toe right up in here. Bring it, there you go. Okay, so the idea that leading strokes don't form a burr, hey, you know, I mean, I guess I can probably grip, break out the microscope and prove it, but I don't really see in my my mind how you are not forming a burr either way. So you might as well use the burr to let you know when you are done with each stage. Do you feel it on that side too? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now when I feel that burr, that burr is probably a thousandth of an inch thick now. I mean it is very, very tiny. And as edge bevels look nice and clean, they go all the way to the very edge, except for right there, and that's ending up in a burr, which is okay. Okay, so now we've got his bevel set on the 1K and on the 6K. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to max out this 6K before we make the jump all the way to the 12K. We probably should have done that on the 1K, um, but we didn't. All right, so now what I want you to do is what's called stone stropping, okay? So you are not going to go into the stone anymore. You're just going to come away from it, just like you're stropping on your strop, all right? So, um, and if it helps, you know, you might want to turn this this away. That helps me when I'm doing stone stropping because it, now it's the regular stone or the regular stropping motion. Okay, now what this is going to do, <coughs> now his edge cannot contact any of the abrasives going this way. Okay, so think of those, those little abrasive particles, little steel particles, and little binder particles as big old boulders inside that water on top of the stone. If you bring the, the edge into it, you're going to hit those. Okay. Now, at this stage of the game, with a very light burr on there, honestly, it really doesn't matter all that much. But to max out the stone, a stropping motion will max out whatever stone you're on, whether it's the 1K, the 6K, the 12K, any of the Ks in between. All right? And... Did I not tell you that that Vance has got an extremely light touch. I cannot see any wear on that tape whatsoever. I mean, it's it's like we just put it on there. I tell you, boy, have you ever thought about being like a surgeon or something like that? Okay, so stone stropping, um, probably like 10 laps on each side, something like that. Uh, stones, okay, so this particular stone that we're using right now is a Suhiro 16. Um, okay, now I'd rather you turned it on the spine just like you do when you strop. There you go. Okay, so this is the box that I got it in. All right, and I got this from Sears Trostel. Now, I've tried looking on the internet, and I haven't gone to Robert Larson Company yet. I've tried, tried finding this stone on the internet to be able to, uh, you know, recommend it to y'all because I really like the stone. I mean, it's uh, um, it makes a really good one stone uh razor setup if that's what you're after but I haven't been able to find one so if any of you guys know where to find this stone with this color I mean I can find the Suhiro's but they're a, the Suhiro 1.6's but they're a different color than this stone and I don't know if if they're the same stone as this is or not I forget we need some water um, I do have a friend that uh, has been working on um, seeing if he likes this sharpening style right here. He's been working on a King 1.6 and he says, you know, it works, uh, what did he say, depressingly well. 
um, you know, a simple stone like this. He went to the 6K and then stropped it on Crocs, linen and leather, and has been shaving with it. And he said it works depressingly well because it does. I mean, there's nothing fancy. It's not an expensive stone, but yet you get good results. We're going to finish this off on a Nanawa 12K. Just because that's the, the edge that Vance seems to like. Because that's what I've always honed his razor with. Yep, now that feels real good. Now see, at this point, I cannot feel that burr on either side. Which means that it's either too small for me to feel, or it's standing straight up, or it's gone. One of those three. I mean, or I can't feel anything in my fingertips anymore that I could, you know, 10 minutes ago. Okay, so we are done with this stone. So we're going to take the Nanawa, and apparently this is not a soaking stone. I thought it was when I bought it, so I soaked it, and I started having some problems with it warping. So if you'll notice, the last time I lapped it, um, I only got this center part right here flat. I was going to, I mean, I had it completely flat, and then I was soaking it, and then it just kept seeming like the stone itself was warping in the water. So I didn't lap it any more than that, just because I didn't want to wear off too much of the stone. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to lap a little bit off the top right now. Just to smooth it and make sure that there's no shop dust or anything like that on top. See where the circle is? Mm -hmm. That's the flat part. So try to kind of stay onto that part. So what I'm going to end up doing is just using the flat part and then just lap it a little bit each time I use it. That way I get to use that abrasive instead of just lapping it all the way and flushing it down the sink. Okay. <clears throat> so now you can go ahead and continue your stone stropping. And I'd say, I mean, these are pretty fast stones. So I would say like maybe 20 or 30 on each side. or 20 or 30 laps. So down and back is one. And then try to stay from here to there. 20 or 30, your choice. Yeah, so this, so far that Suhiro, I'm really liking it an awful lot. Um, the only problem with it is that I can't find, I have not been able to find anywhere else that I can tell you guys to go, to go pick one up. You can probably go a little bit farther. I mean, go to like this, this here, and then that there. Um... Like I said, my buddy's been playing with the King 1.6. Um, I've used this also with the, uh, the Nortons. Uh, the Nortons are a little bit more because you've got to buy two stones to be able to get that whole range that I know of. Um, I've got the Norton 220 and 1K on one stone, and then the 4K and the 8K on the other stone. Um, so you'd have to buy all four or both of those stones plus a finisher if you wanted to. Um, this setup right here, that Suhiro, I think I paid 70 bucks for it at Sears Trostel. Um, this Nanawa 12K, I wanna say I got it at um, Straight Razor Designs and it was, I wanna say it was around 100, something like that. Okay, that was 20? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, I am not feeling a burr on either side, and it looks really good. No lights reflecting off the edge. Okay, now I've shown you palm stropping before, right? Have you ever done it? No. You haven't? 
Mm. Why not? I don't know. You don't know? Okay, so this is going to be Vance's first shot at palm stropping. Palm stropping. Um, don't cut yourself, okay? What you do is you place the heel of the razor on the heel of your hand. Now you strop it back, just like stone stropping or stropping on your strop, okay? As long as that edge is moving away from your skin, then you should not cut yourself. I mean, I know somebody out there will, you know, figure out a way to be able to cut yourself, but as long as you are going back and forth like this with the edge always coming off of your skin, you know, uh, edge trailing strokes, I mean, I've done this, man, I've been doing this for years on pocket knives and hunting knives and kitchen knives. And then I saw Master Olivia do it with a straight razor, and I thought, well, heck, that's a really good idea. So I started doing it with that. I've probably been palm stropping for 20 years or better, and not once have I ever cut myself. All right, so, um, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then just go straight to, uh, I would go like a newspaper strop. Um, because we're going to, this is what takes the last little bit of that burr off before we go to our our nice uh, Crocs, linen, and leather strops. So, try your hand at palm stropping. There you go. I don't see any blood yet. Okay, that's good. There you go. Okay. I do sometimes wonder when I'm doing, um, when I've got the scope out and I'm really looking at edges and I'm really playing around with honing and everything and I start seeing some scratches that are just kind of out of place. I really wonder, although, uh, wonder about that, you know, because I work with my hands so they get beat up, you know, I'm pretty sure that um, if I was to look at that part of my hand up underneath the microscope, I'd see all kind of trash in there, you know, metal particles, sandpaper stuff, you know, all kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so I wonder if maybe I shouldn't switch to a, like a newspaper strop just so I know that it's fairly clean. Um, but anyways, that's just a thought for another day. Okay, so while Vance is finishing up with that, we're going to put a nail there in the bench. And we're going to get my strop ready. Now notice we haven't tested for cut yet. We haven't tested to see if it's sharp. Because honestly, there's not really any way that it couldn't be sharp. I mean, as long as we've done all the steps up to this point the way that we should, then the razor is going to be sharp. Okay, now pull your tape off. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to bring you all down here, and I'm going to, you should be able to see that from where I'm at there, okay. <coughs> so we're going to want to do Crocs first. Okay, so we put the, the strop through like that, and then I am going to hold this. Now Vance, I want you to do just like you do with your, your strop in your bathroom. Okay, I want you to do 10 laps. Nice and light, slow, controlled. Now the strop is what actually finishes your edge, okay? So you can, I mean, you know, they call like that Nanawa 12K a finisher, and it does finish, but the strop is actually your finisher, okay? It actually micro bevels the, um, the edge. And so you might finish on a 12K stone, but the Crocs is 30, roughly 30,000. So that's what you're actually shaving with. Although a friend of mine, he says he doesn't normally use Crocs. And so, um, uh, so I've got to try that out here pretty soon. That's what this test is going to be. I'm going to finish out this razor on a, uh, uh, an Arkansas black. Now I want you to, now palm strop that just to get the crocs off. Yep. 
Yep, you want the crocs off the blade so that it doesn't get on your linen. Is it nice and clean? Pretty sure it is. Okay. Let me wipe it down right here. You hold this. Let me wipe that down right quick. Make sure we get all the crocs off of it, or the majority of it off of it. Oh, that edge is starting to look really good. I cannot see any trace of a burr. It looks like the bevels are meeting. The scratch pattern on the the bevels are good. I mean, what I can see with the naked eye. Okay, so now do 20 laps on the linen. Now, now hold this at the same time. Because otherwise, then that starts swinging back and forth. Yep, so 20. just 20. Okay. Nice and smooth and slow. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited to do that test. I mean, I've always, you know, I mean, when I first started shaving with a straight razor, I mean, seriously, now that was like a year and a half ago or so, you know, I bought uh, Lynn Abrams DVD, and in it, he showed you using Crocs. And so I kind of thought, well, that's what you were supposed to do. I mean, you hone the razor, and then after it's honed, you put it on Crocs, and then you put it on leather, or put it on Crocs, then you put it on linen, then you put it on leather and then you shave with it and then from there after you just use linen and leather until the edge starts tugging um, or until you want to try out a different edge um, then you finish the edge on whatever your finisher is and then you crocs it and then linen and leather I thought that was kind of the all right now do I don't know 20 or 30 on on straight up leather now this is um, this is a straight razor design strop uh, three inches by like I don't know 19 something like that um, and it's a really good strop I think uh, the fabric is um, uh, natural canvas and then the leather is uh, English bridle and it's a really good strop I really like it uh, so I'm pretty excited to, to try this whole um, you know shaving fresh off the stones um, that particular buddy he has tried my method so I'm gonna have to try his um, where he finishes on whatever finishing stone he's gonna use and then um, when he's done he goes straight to linen and leather and then shaves and that's kinda what this is all about really is just playing around with with different edges um, you know different techniques I mean you know the worst that can possibly happen is you know you try some other technique out and more than likely it's gonna work if uh, if it's working for a friend of yours it's probably gonna work for you and the worst that can happen is you can have two right I right ways to do it from then on now the uh, like I said now this what Vance has done here is the whole burr based method the way that I typically bring an edge up um, you don't have to go through that every single time now if you're stropping like Vance is you know very nice and light um, was that 50 or 20, 20? Yeah. if your strop technique is really good and you strop on a you know a fairly um, fairly taut strop like that you know that's nice and flat um, you really shouldn't have to drop back to a um, to a 1k you know to be able to set a bevel you know or to tune your razor up so once once your bevel is set um, Once your bevel's set the first time, you know, unless you get damage to that edge, um, or, you know, I mean, you hit the sink, 
or the faucet or something like that with the edge uh, we're going to use a little bit of Parasso green here that's the menthol stuff and just a bowl this was actually a really nice brush handle when I made it and then we just got some new puppies in the house uh, this is olive wood and of course I guess they decided that that olive wood tasted okay so they chewed the crap out of it um, badger two brand two band brush or two band badger brush from uh, maggards I think I really like these brushes um, anyways I got too much water in there um, Anyways, once you set the bevel like that, I mean, you should be good to go pretty much until the edge gets damaged. You know, I mean, after that, um, once you get your bevel set the first time, unless it gets damaged, you're, you're not really setting the bevel again. You know, I mean, you're just tuning everything up. All right. I don't laugh at all the faces I'm making in here. Now, let's see how Vance did. Maybe we ought to ask him. You think it's going to shave? Hopefully. Hopefully? I think it's more than a hopeful. Boy, I just really cannot. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. I hope you guys can... I usually shave fresh out of the shower so my beard's a little bit softer And this is really kind of weird, so I'm looking, I'm trying to look at the screen to see what y'all are seeing. But I can't really see, I mean I can see that I'm shaving in the, the screen. But I really can't see where the edge is. So I'm trying to look around the camera at the edges of the mirror and then kind of look to see what I'm doing and to see what you're seeing all at the same time. Kind of wild. So that's first pass there. Now I generally only do two passes. I go um, with the grain just like that to start with and then I go against the grain up underneath here up underneath the neck and then I go cross grain from here over it seems to me like when I do against the grain up here um, it's almost like the shaves too close and I can uh, 
like a couple hours later, I can kind of feel the hair start to poke out back through the skin. It's it's kind of strange. I mean, I don't get that feeling up underneath here, but I do get it up on my cheeks. And let me tell you, after not shaving for a week, this feels really good. All right, let's palm strap it a little bit. Okay. And these little itty bitty razors, you can really see my shake with them. I don't know how Vance shaves with one of these dinky little things all the time. Of course, you guys saw his hands. I mean, they're insanely steady. Okay. So there you go. Now you guys, give Vance, at home in your living rooms, give Vance a big round of applause. First ever, I mean, he's spent some time on the hones, but really more just to kind of get the feel for it and everything. I think this is your first time actually doing start to finish razor that was dull all the way to shave ready edge. And you guys saw the edge that, I, that he put on there. I mean, you know, it's not a bad edge. And honestly, they only get better um, usually the first edge that uh, the first shave you get out of it is going to be a little bit on the rough side but this one really wasn't bad and then as you shave and strop and shave and strop and shave and strop it it generally smooths out for for me <clears throat> maybe two or three shaves something like that at most fourth shaves I mean if you've got something that's got a really narrow edge angle um, you know, and you've got a very, very crisp edge. I might get that very crisp feeling for maybe as many of, as four or five shaves before the edge settles down. And then it's just business as usual for, I don't know, another six months or so until you need to tune the edge up. Now, once you need to tune the edge up, you don't have to go all the way back to a bevel set. 
you know you can drop into your you can go straight to your finisher um, which you know with that 12k I would say you know go go back to the finisher and put you know 20 30 strokes on either side now if you drop back to like a 6k you know you might only need to do you know 10 15 strokes on each side then go to your finisher for 10 or 15 strokes and then you know back to your crocs or linen and leather whatever you wanted to I mean you don't have to get the burr every single time that's just mostly to let you know when you're done setting the bevel um, yeah so give Vance a big round of applause at home in your living room um, for honing his, his first razor now this is his particular razor so we're going to go ahead and give it a uh, strop it on the linen just to dry the edge out and then it's going to go in the, his bathroom and he'll shave with it probably for a year or so until it needs tuned up again um, yeah I don't think he's ever shaved with anything but a straight never shaved with a cartridge or a double edge or an electric razor god those electric razors they sound angry you know I mean my my grandpa Paul gave me one of those when I was like 15 years old and I never liked it because it sounded just angry right up there next to my face like that whereas these don't okay um, again this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery you can find me on the web CaltonCutlery.com I hope you enjoyed the video you guys see how easy this honing stuff is okay there is no rocket science you're rubbing a chunk of steel on a rock in such a manner that both uh, planes both sides of the edge bevels meet together if you have a burr if you don't have a burr micro bevel on the the strop with crocs or without i mean it's really easy okay get a razor if you don't want to practice on your hundred year old you know file worked spine razor you know get a gold dollar and start practicing on that or get a uh, an ebay razor and start practicing on that but whatever you do start practicing all right, start honing, hone your own razors. Um, you'll find out it's an awful lot of fun, and it's not near as tough as what you've been led to believe. Again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com, and we will see you next time.